And welcome in to another edition of the Morning Edge Dead Press Picks. Joined as always by Slap Rules. It is Monday. It's an important Monday, John, because it is National Championship Monday. Also, we just found out who is going to be in the uh, NFL playoffs. We got all our matchups set up, so we will get into that as well. So a lot to get into, John. First of all, though, how you doing? How was the weekend? Got, got uh, it was a great weekend, man. I had a great time. We had some um, some bets win. We had a couple bets lose. Uh, after the whole weekend, though, I was up. So that okay. always feels good to wake up on Monday um, with more money than less money. I also had a very, very fun thing happen. What's that? You know how you ever play on um, prize picks? I have. Website? Yes. Well, Friday, I got alerted by uh, by the great Connor Allen. I think we had him in the Thunderdome. His Thunderdome. Uh, I think he, he beat us once, yeah. so we know he's good. So he um, he alerted everybody in the chat to the fact that they had the Vikings guys' numbers up, even though they uh, probably weren't going to play the whole game. So I did the disgusting thing and took unders on, like, Hawkinson, Jefferson, um, and Cousins. And then I put in Chig to go over on Saturday night. And then I forgot I did that. So okay. I woke up this morning. I just said, I was looking for, um, you know, I was looking on there to see, you know, what was going on with the national title game. And I was like, dude, I got like $500 more in here than I thought I had. And then I hit the last one. I was like, where the hell did that come? Did I get a bonus? That's and, a great uh, I did not get a bonus. I actually won. So shout Count out to Price. Connor Allen and just uh, surprise bets. That was awesome. So that's a great thing to wake up to. I think it's a good sign for tonight's game. That's big. That is big. Well, first we're going to recap the Thunderdome you just alluded to. John, it is my first Thunderdome victory. I think this was our fourth Thunderdome. Uh, yep. So, you know, now, now I'm shooting 25%. There it is. Plus uh, 0 0.81 units was enough to get it done. Me and John have a little bit of a, a strategy. We're not going to give it away to our opponents who are watching, but – you know, typically John's going to go for the big plus money plays. I'm going to go for the minus 110s, and typically we're going to win. Uh, shout out to Ben, though, for hopping on. Did a good job. Got that uh, Got that California bet to hit. He lost, obviously, Mahomes and Detroit. Um, you know, for me, the, the Steelers kind of were the icing on the cake. That was a good game, kind of close. Uh, Deshaun Watson threw a couple picks to help me out there. So shout out to the Steelers there for covering that. We'll have a new guest uh, coming up this week, but – John, once again, me and you get to stay in the Thunderdome. That's big, big for us. Not that's huge. I, I like being in there. I like the thunder and lightning thing we got going on, smash and dash, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, it's all deadly. Um, I was very close to literally sweeping that. If that fourth quarter went a little bit better, I would have been straight up. Like, Dobbs really, like, shit the bed. At that. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing, man? Like, at, in the second half or the fourth quarter, really. But, um, no, Trevor Lawrence missing that guy. Uh, I think it was Zay Jones wide open in the end zone. That really, really damaged that game for me personally mm -hmm. just because he needed the Jaguars to go ahead because the, tie, the Titans kept doing what they always do. They keep giving Derrick Henry the ball and trying to make him win by, you know, gain three yards at a time. It's stupid. I hate it. But it is what it is. It was a great win for us, I think, combined – we were up uh, 0.75 units. Boom. So that's good. That's it's huge. Not. It's always better to be up than down. Always is. That is that's the that's only thing. You, you cannot argue that. Uh, let's talk about these games there, John, for the uh, wild card weekend. So we get, we got some good action coming up. Here it is uh, right there on the screen, the super wild card weekend. Uh, Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Jacksonville. Then Sunday we go Miami, Buffalo, New York, Minnesota, Baltimore, Cincy. And then the Monday night game. Uh, Dallas Tampa. So we all knew that that early game was going to include uh, Seattle. Once we saw Seattle get in, we were like, all right, it has to include Seattle. Jacksonville is more fun. Like if the Titans won that game, I bet we would have seen the Titans early because they're so bad. They would have wanted to get the Titans out. But Jacksonville wins. So now Jacksonville gets put in a primetime slot uh, with Los Angeles. That game, John, might be the one I'm most excited for. Uh, Trevor Lawrence versus Justin Herbert. But a yep. lot of good matches across the board. Anything stick out to you uh, from a betting standpoint that you want to lock in early? Um, I, I could see the Chargers, like, whipping the Jaguars. That yeah. could happen. I yeah. could also see, like, I don't like the giant spreads, but uh, I could see the Bills just absolutely boat racing Miami. Like, yeah. That could happen. 
Other other than that, I mean, I think we and you are on opposite sides on the Cowboys Buccaneers, but that's not something I'm super confident in. I'm more just kind of I don't know, like curious. That yeah. makes sense. No, yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I don't the know. Seattle San Francisco game, I have no idea about. Well, that that's probably going to be. I think the 49ers are going to win that by like 50. I think that's going to be ugly. Um, I, I kind of want the Seahawks out for what they did to the Lions. <laughs> No, I don't think anyone really wants the Seahawks to get in, um, except maybe Seattle fans did. Uh, the, the thing with the Seahawks was it's a great story, but I think they're going to lose by like 65 to the 49ers. I mean, I don't think they're going to have any chance in that I game. Hope so. Yeah, I, I, hope think, so. I think it's going to be rough. And the Lions would have given them a game on the other side of things. Uh, there's no doubt about that if the Lions were able to sneak in. Uh, we got the, the Dolphins and Bills. That game's interesting to me because I'm guessing we, we – Get no two in that game. Um, trying to, is that your dog going? He's liking this. My he's dog liking this. is loving the dog. I don't know if we're gonna get rid of all this barking either because uh, we got a situation here. What, what do you get? What do we got? I got, got the front window open, which she normally doesn't go to, and yeah. when she does, all bets are off. Yeah, I mean, it's Uber. also, yeah, Uber that, see, that's, that's a that's... much larger view of like the neighborhood, right? So she can she can see a lot. Like it takes yeah. a while for people to get through the, the vision there. Yeah. So, I don't know. so you know what I think I'm gonna do? What's that? I think I'm gonna close the window. Do you yeah, want go, to? go close I it? Think, I, think I, I think that's the play here. Yeah, I'll, I'll take over for I'll take it for a minute. Yeah, you go close the window. I'll I'll talk about the game. So while John closes the window uh because of his dog, the other game someone just commented about that Bill's um Bill's Dolphins game, it, it all comes down to me who plays at the quarterback position. I don't think two is going to play, especially based off that spread. Like if Skylar Thompson goes out there, the Bills are going are to win that game by three touchdowns. I mean, he barely moved the ball against the Jets. That's a game. The, the Bucks cowboys game, though, John, that one's interesting. I, you guys know I absolutely – I hate the Cowboys as much as I love the Eagles. So if the Cowboys lose next week, it's going to feel just as good as an Eagles playoff win for me. Yep. I don't know if I can back the Bucks though. I mean, I've done it a lot this year, and they, they're the one team that is kind of like consistently screwed me. Offensively, I just don't think they have that that firepower that we've seen in the past. But then again, Dallas comes into this game ice cold. I mean, they looked horrendous yesterday against the Washington team that's already been eliminated, that was sitting a decent amount of guys. Uh, and Dak Prescott now, John, I don't know if you saw this, his new line to throw an interception every game is minus 500. Uh, that that's his new line before every game. They they got a minus five hundred to throw an interception. That's how bad he's been. That's not great. No, that's not going to get that's, it done. That's like really bad. That's really bad. I mean that that's that's the Karen Dak Prescott. Someone asked who we have winning the AFC. Uh, if I was going to bet who's going to win the AFC, John, I'm staying very simple. I th- I think it's I think it's Buffalo who gets it done. Even though Kansas City's got that number one seed. Um, but then again, in that AFC championship with what happened, it, it could end up being neutral site. I, I think Buffalo gets, gets it this year, John. I think, I think it's their turn. I would take, um, I would take whoever has the biggest odds right away out of the Bengals, Bills and Chiefs. If I was going to try to bet that, like, I don't know. I think you got to like galaxy brain that thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I think those three teams are the one, but, um. I don't know. Could you see the Chargers slip in there somehow? I I think the Chargers will beat the Jags. I'll say that. I don't know. They could. They could. They. I don't know what they were doing yesterday. I don't know if you watched that game. They were playing their starters, and like Mike Williams got hurt. They had someone else get hurt. I'm like, dude, you're already locked in. And they that they that coach. He's done a lot of confusing things uh, in his tender. Even though he's done a good job this year. Yeah. I think he's a Madden coach. I think. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, something, yeah, something. he was just like, all right, yeah, we're going to roll you guys. I mean, he didn't take Herbert out until, like, the end of the third. Like, it was kind of absurd. So, um, those are our predictions, guys, on those early games. Obviously, as the week goes on, we will we'll talk about those games all week. But it's always exciting when the lines first come out, the Super Bowl odds, all that stuff. So, uh, you know, that's always a good time. John, now it's time for your list. Speaking of the Super Bowl, so. Ooh, I love um, that. We usually do this on Tuesday. I think we're doing early this week, right? We're getting to yep. Monday. Well, there's no Monday night game to kind of shake things up. There we go. This is easy, Matt. My so Eagles easy. Still not on. Okay. Yeah, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. It, it, it almost though. I mean, they, almost. 
Okay. Got the Bucks in there. It was a six okay. team. It could have possibly been the Eagles. Okay. But uh, no, Chiefs, Bills, Bengals from the AFC. If you're a fan of one of those teams, you still got a chance. Like, uh, it's going to get wild. It's going to get hairy. Um, I think the Chiefs probably get the easiest path since they only have to beat one of those teams, whereas the Bills are going to have to beat two of those teams, and same with the Bengals since they play each other. Mm-hmm. But uh, going to the NFC side of things, the 49ers are probably going to the Super Bowl, man. Like, that's just that's just how it worked out. Because, I mean, the Seahawks, that's a cakewalk. And then – I can't remember what I just saw, but I think the next game's another cakewalk. Do they get the Giants Vikings winner? Cakewalks all over. Who's that? Well, I think it, doesn't it reseed? If uh, my Nigel, memory... does it reseed? I think. Oh yeah, it might reseed. Does it reseed? Because I, I think like if the Eagles like if the uh, we should know this. Like if the Seahawks win, I think we would play the Seahawks. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, it would recede like that. Yeah, someone, yeah, someone comment if you know for sure, but I think. They've changed it over the, I don't know, they, they do it a lot. Well, it doesn't matter, because the, the 49ers, they, they, they're going. Uh, but if they don't, I could see somehow, some way. I told you this a few weeks ago, and everyone laughed at me when I was saying the Bucks, because even though they were playing so bad, it's like none of this matters, though. Because, yeah. Like the first game of the playoffs is what matters, but then – I could see a world where they beat the Cowboys, and now all of a sudden there's only what four teams left in the NFC, and they're one of them. You know what I mean? And the next thing you know, they they somehow win the next one. Before you know it, you got an NFC title game with Tom Brady, and anything could happen in that. And I don't like betting against him ever for any reason, just because even with Todd Todd Bowles as his coach, even with you know everything you've seen this season. Everything changes in the playoffs. Like it's a whole, and everyone's zero and zero right now. None of the regular season even matters. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I so I so for that reason, I think that's why they made the list because they have Tom Brady. Look at this bracket. This is an <laughs> OC special bracket. Um, yeah, it does. It does recede, by the way. Um, so that we do know that 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 is confirmed. So they they it would go back. So here, here's the thing, though, guys. Um, I don't know that that Bucks that Bucks Cowboys game is kind of tripping me up. I feel like it's I want the Bucks to win, but then again, like Brady. So if okay, so say every favorite wins, right? The Vikings beat the Giants. The yeah. Four Niners are going to beat the Seahawks. Like the Eagles would have to play Brady uh, in Philly, which I would like, or they'd play Dallas in Philly, which I would like. Like yeah. in a in a perfect world, the Giants beat the Vikings and the Giants come to Philly. That would be easy. That that I don't that even want to be more fun, yeah, for you. Yeah, but I, I think the Vikings win that game. They have to go to San Francisco. San Francisco is literally in the NFC title yeah. game without playing anybody. Yeah. They, have you ever done like uh, you ever play like Madden? You can like super sim to like the fourth quarter. That's what like that game will be. Like they they will just like, sim. Yeah, they, they're like we don't even need to play this game. We know we're gonna win. Yep. But that's kind of the Forty ers might beat the Vikings by like again they might win by fifty. Yeah, the Eagles are going to have a challenging game if it's uh, – but, I, again, I think – I don't want to say I'm most scared of Dallas, but I'd probably least want to play Dallas. That's the team that you want to lose to less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know like if you mean? play yeah, anyone. That would suck to lose to Dallas. The 49ers like, are going to be tough. The whole offseason would just suck. But what yeah. if what if the Giants yeah. won and they end up beating Philly? That would be – that would be worse than the Cowboys beating Philly in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. If the Giants beat Philly, it would be, I mean, very, 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 very sad day. I don't think – but here's the thing with the Giants. Like, that spread makes me think they might beat the Vikings because – but then again, yeah. everyone's like – yeah, everyone, like, hates the Vikings and, like, disrespects them so much. But, like, they're at home and they're a field goal favorite against the Giants. Like, that's actually crazy. And they're purple, though, bro. Like, and that's – You know, so there's that. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people in the comments are saying they think the uh, – 49ers have the easiest th- th- path here. And I think they're right. I think they do have kind of a cakewalk until the NFC Championship. Wake up in like two weeks and be in like halftime of the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. Oh, shit. How do we get here? Like, so, oh, yeah. Here's the thing with the 49ers. And I do think they make it to the NFC Championship. But you got to remember, it's still like a rookie quarterback. And I know he's been out of control. Uh, you know, I think he has, what, the third best record ever to start your career. Like, he's 5-0. and Big Ben, I-, I saw last night, it was like, Quarterbacks with best starts. Big Ben went like fourteen and zero or thirteen and zero. Like that's yeah. crazy. Purdy's ranked like third. This is very similar, very similar situation though, because they weren't they weren't um, 
relying on Big Ben. I would even say that the 49ers rely less on Purdy than the Steelers did with Big Ben. Because Steelers yeah, see, I, I don't remember. The, I, I was like six or seven, so I don't yeah, really Steelers, They were defense back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, don't, right, he played well. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, but they were like, I, I think it was the bus was their running back, and they had a defense. And, like, if you look, now it's, you know, a Kyle Shanahan offense where you just plug in anybody. You put Debo at quarterback if you want and somehow win games. You know what I mean? Like, he, they yeah. – they don't rely on Purdy, and he can throw it outside the numbers too, which changes a lot. Like I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty big on the 49ers. And uh, per our producer Nigel John, the uh, Steelers got waxed that year by Tom Brady. So yep. does this history repeat itself? We don't, we don't know about that. Um, the yep. one thing though, I will say about about this bracket, it's going to be fun, John. We know that, and we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of, a lot of bets on it. This is the best time of the year because after this, it gets a little sad. February gets a little depressing after the Super Bowl, so be prepared. You know, hey, bro. Yeah, make the most of it. Bet on every game that you can. Uh, so that's John's list, guys. Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, 49ers, Bucks. Uh, we did just get a comment that the, the, someone said the Seahawks are going to beat the 49ers. I don't think so, but, I mean, maybe they will. They, they still got to go no. play the game. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. Donate to a charity if you're going to bet that. Like, Don't just give your money to the books. That's, yeah, that's, not, that's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah, I think, I think it's going to be ugly. All right, guys, so that gets us through a little NFL talk. But a lot of people are forgetting tonight is the national championship. So this is the big game. This is it. We will not have another college football game played, guys, until August. Uh, if you do the quick math on that, that's a decent amount of time that you're going to have to wait. So bet everything is my best advice in this game. Bet the total, bet the spread, bet the props, bet the same game. Probably. Yeah, get your fix in tonight because you have to wait a long, long time uh, until you can bet on a college football game again. And we got a good one, all right? We got the TCU Horned Frogs, George Bulldogs. Uh, I don't know if anyone could fact check this. What is this the largest national championship spread ever? Does anyone know? I mean, 13 and a half. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Okay. Uh, we don't We don't got to fact check that. Yeah, it's the largest spread ever in the college football national championship game. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's. Yeah, we don't need. Yeah, that, that's – I mean, 13 and a half laying that match. Uh, so that means the money line there, a plus 375, uh, total at 62 and a half. John, just what's your thoughts on this game before we get to the picks? Like, if you're if you're just talking through this game, what's your feel on this one? Um, I've known since – trying to think. What was the day of the Oregon-Georgia game? Do you remember the date of that game? I can get it in two seconds. We don't uh, need it. It was early but, September. Uh, I was by a pool. That was back during Seltzer season. So September third or September third, yeah. Yeah, that was the day I knew that Georgia was going to win a national championship. Okay. Because there's no chance that any other team could beat them for the national championship. Even when Ohio State had them on the ropes, the best kicker in college football almost hit people in the stands with a field goal attempt. You know what I mean? Like so. They're just destined to win. I yeah. mean, you know what I'm saying? They were on the ropes. Marvin Harrison gets hurt. Like, I mean, come on. Like, what's happening right now? You know what I mean? Like, someone's pulling strings. And then somehow TCU gets by Michigan. And if you watch that game, that game started so weird with the uh, pick six. TCU really couldn't move the ball. They, they got, But they did get a pick six. And then they got another pick six later, which is pretty ridiculous because you don't see a lot of, you know, dual pick sixes in the same game. Uh, yeah, they're, they're lucky to be here. I'll be honest with you. They wear purple yeah. too, which we are on the record of saying we've always said that purple. We have called are. purple teams frauds for a yep. long time. Yep. Yep. Do not I, take that in championship games. Well, and, and also another purple team. Yeah, that, that's very true. But our, our producer, uh, Nigel just told me that this is the largest spread in the last 23 years in a national championship. And I think the dog <laughs> lost, right? Ever do then. So you're not lying. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, I'm only 24, so in my life, this is pretty much the, the yeah. largest. Uh, the biggest one ever. Yeah, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah, anything yeah, I, else, I mean, I could just say cold. that didn't happen. Yeah, but here's the thing, John. We have called the purple teams frauds, but TCU has been – everyone's been overlooking them this entire season. I can't – I'm done doing it. I'm betting on TCU tonight. Okay, I'm taking a money line spread. I'm money. Yeah, I was about to say, if you're going to bet them, take the money line. Be, take the money line, saying, too. be strong about this. 
Yeah, like, I mean, Georgia, yeah. obviously, when it comes down to talent, like, they are way, way, way more talented. They're going to have probably, I don't know, what, 20 pros on that team. Uh, but at the end of the day, John, there's something about the Horn Frogs this year. They just – every time people people write them off, Max Duggan comes out makes a couple crazy plays. I didn't think they had a chance against Michigan. I thought Michigan was going to, you know, steamroll them. And they, they dominated that. Yeah, yeah, they, they did. They dominated that one. I don't know. I think they get it done tonight. I, I do. I, I like them to win this one outright. Uh, it's I am betting on a purple team, so I'll admit there's some some caution there. But why not? It's the last bet of the season. You, uh, plus yeah. three seventy five. I mean, plus three seventy five. It always gets. I'm a sucker for a plus three seventy five. Just sprinkle it with me. I mean, I know you think George is going to win, but like you've made bets before where you're like, I know this is probably going to lose, but it's fun. Like, oh yeah, I do it all yeah. the time. Yeah, you can no, do that. No, the, the, you're not wrong. The price is the price is right. Yeah, I mean, completely right. So there's that. Um, I think Georgia's gonna just manhandle these kids, but uh, but maybe I don't know. Maybe not. And yeah. then that's what I'm saying. So what you do is is uh, you take TCU on the money line, like you do, and then all you got to do is just go take TCU passing props. Yes. Now yeah. You're also, they're you're gonna win. They're not, they're not like, running. The ball. No ways to play this. Like you don't. You don't have to be just stuck taking that. Like, all right, that's my bet. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like, no you need a lot of cards and figure out how you can bring money home by hitting less than half of your bets. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you need. I mean? You probably should end the night with at least I don't know six or seven college football bets. Yeah, you know, I would it's do three. You could take. Um, I could I could do three off the top of my head. That would probably net you money. Yeah. Uh, by but with one of them being TCU plus three seventy five, and I think they're going to get their asses kicked. See, you know I'm still, still betting it. But yeah, I can still pop. You know what I mean? Like, like there's yeah. ways to do this. You just gotta yeah. think. You gotta galaxy bring these books. Like these books are smart, but we're smarter. We're smarter. Yeah, we we uh -huh. are smarter than the books. That is, that has been proven. Uh, on the total, someone asked, John, you're gonna be mad at me. I do like the under here, but I would say first half under. Uh, full game gets a little dicey at the end, you know. If TCU's getting, I don't getting like the old. I don't like that. I, but I could see early, like a little bit of a uh, feeling out process where you know, run the ball a lot, let that clock tick. I don't know. Full, first half, I'm just being a dick about it by putting it at sixty-two and a half. It shouldn't be sixty-two and a half, but they know everybody's gonna take the over. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? They they well, uh, yeah. like that. I don't like. I don't like it. I and I don't. I'm not gonna bet the under. So as soon as I saw the number. I was just like, no, thank you, I'm not betting and I'm not going to bet the total now. Yeah, thank you for ruining my fun. I'm not yeah, betting. I, it, this should have been high 50s, but you guys had to had to do your little sports book thing yeah. and put it in the 60s, which is not cool. That should, really? This total should be in the high 50s, and we should be able to be hammering it. Hammering. And they did not let us do that. So shout All out to right. the books for being dicks about it. Uh, we just got a comment, John. Uh, some someone said that they're taking TCU plus thirteen and Georgia first half minus seven. What do you think about that? That's um, I, you don't see a lot of people win both of those. But what I will say is, good. That's glory. You hang yeah. your balls, and that's what you have to do. You know, and that's what this person is doing. Assuming that this is a guy. Yes, it is. Uh, someone else, um, Georgia team total over thirty-seven and a half. You think well, I see 38 and a half all day plus 100. So that go down? Maybe, maybe he's getting the minus line. You know, maybe he's like minus 120 or something. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's something I'd look into. But if you – I just think if you like that, you could take the TCU passing props, you, you know what I'm saying, still because – and get plus money on those just because if Georgia does score 38 points, then you're probably looking at Duggan throwing the ball a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's that true. So it's one, like the others probably like don't. minus one thirty for that. Why not look at the player prop if you're in a state that allows player props? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, my my dog's is deciding to to tear apart uh, my chair, so that's good in the middle of the show. But um, the uh, yeah, definitely, definitely looking at that second high. Oh, I like this second half to be the highest scoring half is plus one hundred five. Uh, Michael just commented that. I think I love that. I think I'm gonna 100% bet that. So yeah, uh, that that looks good. Where that looks ask good. Mike where that is. Michael, can you let us know please where that is? Because we're gonna bet it with you. Um, yeah. 
John, you also got a question from someone saying, can you ask John to talk about uh, Quentin Yards over? That that one, I think That's we over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've talked about well, but we'll we'll get there. We we still got some more picks. Sorry, I'm just keeping up with the comments. Someone said first half under 31 and a half. That's actually what I like too. Uh I am a fan of that first half under. But I really like that second half. How about that? You go first half under and then bet second half highest scoring half. That's a that's a double winner, I think. I think yeah, you're gonna yeah, win. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Now now your galaxy brain in the books. Yeah. But you this like is why it. this is why the comments are good, John. They're getting us more bets for tonight and we play new games yeah. that they want you to play. Yeah, this is this is good. I'm just reading through all the uh Okay, so Michael said that's on DraftKings, John, the second highest half scoring. Okay. So we will be riding that, Michael. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, yeah, I advise most people to ride that. I think that's a winner. I do think that'll get there. So that, that's our thoughts on the game. Now it is time for me and John's actual pick on the game, uh, our last college football pick of the Morning Edge season. That that's It's been a good year, John. It's been fun. But now it's time for what exactly. we're actually locking in. Quick year. This this year went very very fast. Uh, we'll start with you as we always do, John. Looking at are we looking at a prop here? What are we doing? I think um I think we're doing Max Max Duggan two seventy five passing yards two hundred seventy five plus plus one eighteen. I think that um sorry I had to do something. I think that this is going to be a game where Georgia gets out in front. I, I think Georgia's going to play this game from ahead. I thought that was going to happen last time with Michigan, and they had all kinds of weird stuff happen, and they fell behind. But, like, that, if you remember, they were up 20 to 6, I think, at the half. Yeah. Was that the score? It was something like that. It was something like just bad. Well, so, you, so the dog in that game is up 20 to 6. That quarterback still threw for 225 yards. You, you know what I mean? So, like, it wasn't like it was. It was that far off of his total for the game. I could only imagine what would have happened if we didn't get so many of those runs that would never happen if they were behind. So in the second half of this one, this kid could have like 70 yards to the half and still cover this just because I really think Georgia goes out ahead. It's a great bet for anybody that thinks Georgia's going to win this game, but they're scared to lay 13 and a half. I like that. So if you want to do that, if you, if you think Georgia's going to win – but you're scared to lay 13 and a half, then I would say this is probably the move for you. Yeah, this is for you. This is what this is. This yeah. is specifically made for you. Uh, I do like that. I'll obviously be telling that. I don't think TCU is going to be able to run the ball with any success. I think they'll nope. just kind of be like, you know, screw it. We're just going to let loose. Let Max be a gunslinger one last time. So I, I do get think, uh, yeah, just let Max get wild, uh, get weird. I think they win this game. Uh, led by like a Max Duggan 400 yard kind of night. How about that? What's that? Can you even get that 400? Um, I checked. I think they only go up to. They're getting so you just exposed the books, Matt, for what there they're doing. There we go. But what what they've been doing? I've noticed this is they're not giving us the crazy high ones because since his number's 240 and a half at FanDuel. We should get 350, right? You would think that. Thank you. This only goes up to 300, and 300 is plus 350. Now, if you've ever seen any real ladders, you'll see some 580s, some 650s, some 880s. We'll see those. But, but see, they would have to give 325 and 350, which is totally in play, but those would be like plus 880, like 350 would, even though that he could get. So they don't want to do that. They're only going to let us go up to plus 350, and that's for 300 plus yards, which I, I I hate when they do that because I wanted to see what you just said. Yeah, I want I want to go all the way up the ladder. Plus 880. Yeah, I wanted to get a like a real wild bet in there, but yeah, it's not going to happen. There, there's no chance they're going to give us anything higher than 300. Hmm. All right, well, we'll ride at 275. I'm going to lock in here, guys. Quentin Johnston over four and a half receptions. A little bit juicy here at minus 155, but I think this gets home uh, with relative ease. Johnson's going to be the first wide receiver off the board in this upcoming NFL draft. So even though Georgia has some great corners, uh, they're going to have a top 10 corner. Ringo, he's going to go top 10. Here's the thing, though, with, with Johnson and kind of what me and John were just talking about. TCU's not going to be able to run the ball. They're going to even give Johnson – I say he's going to get two screens in this game. Just two easy 
extension of the run game kind of plays where he just gets the easy play. This is Duggan's top option, a thousand plus yard receiver. I mean, he is clearly their best option. Like there's Johnson, then there's like a fall off. Not, no offense to Tay Barber because that took his over too. But I mean, there is a gap in talent when it comes to these guys. George is going to give him attention. I get that. Um, but I think they just find ways throughout this game to put the ball in his hands. Uh, and I think a lot of that is going to be some shorter routes. I don't know if he's going to kill them over the top like he does a lot of teams. They're going to take deep shots with him. Uh, but that last game against Michigan, John, it was like third and eight. Michigan had all the momentum in the world. The game was down to three with like a lot of time. They just threw him a little shallow cross. And I mean, you just, you just ran off like 75 wow. yards. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's, Zell, bro. yeah, he looked looked smooth, but that's his ability. I mean, the, the, in this game, I don't see a way that we don't uh, we don't see Johnson get here at least five catches. I think we're going to see a lot of check down, uh, a lot of extension of the run game. Again, this is a very good Georgia defense, but when you're the guy, when you're about to go number one in the NFL draft at your position, you have to get five catches in the national championship. I mean, it should be a rule. Like if he gets under this, he should fall to the second round kind of thing. So yep. maybe he yeah. will. Yeah, first half yeah, 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 exactly. Maybe he clears it in the first half. Who knows? Um, but minus, yeah, minus 155. It's tough to – these props, John, tough to get, like, a lot of – like, I'm looking at, like, any time touchdowns. Some of these guys are, like, minus 200 to score. It's crazy. I mean, it's college, so yeah. you get a lot yeah. more. But I mean, it's – I can't get a touchdown. You know, they, yeah. we're not – right, you should be getting for a touchdown. It's not really fair, but that those are the lines uh, for tonight. So Quentin Johnston there for me over four and a half. John's going Max Duggan there at two seventy five plus passing yards plus one eighteen. Throw these in a little same gamer with us, you know. Make make up yours, but make sure to add these in. Uh, so those are our two best bets. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be it for the picks. Before we go though, guys, we do have a uh, five hundred dollar giveaway that we are doing here. Look at that, John, 500 bucks. And we get a cool graphic. Uh, all you have to do to enter this is subscribe and comment. Now where you subscribe and comment is gonna be on the YouTube page at Odds Checker US. Uh, you can watch these episodes actually on YouTube also. I know a lot of people like to watch them on Twitter. You can watch them really wherever you want. But if you do watch them on Odds Checker's uh, YouTube page today, make sure you take two seconds out of your day to subscribe and comment and you are entered in. The winner will be announced at the end of the month. Had a big winner last month. That guy was super fired up. Uh, someone else is going to be fired up at the end of January because you're getting 500 bucks for literally liking a video, subscribing, and commenting. It's probably the easiest way that you can ever earn $500 to so make sure to enter. Uh, guys, John, any closing comments? I think that's it for us today. I think that that's going to be it for the Monday that's show. It. Can't wait for this game. This is one of my favorite Mondays of the year. Great Monday. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fired up. I can't wait. High quality Monday. Yeah, make sure you guys enjoy the game. Again, get in as many bets as you can. It's the last night of the year for college football. Just go all in. Make a lot of money. Make sure to tell us. I uh, hope you all have an awesome Monday. John and I will be back with another episode of the Morning Edge tomorrow morning. See you guys then.